This is part 2 of the lecture on acute terrial diseases in which we shall discuss about the control of acute terrial diseases. Control of terrial diseases. Control means bringing down the incidence to such a level that it is no more a burden on the country. It is no more a public health problem for the country. So controlling diarrhea diseases has two components. One is short term and long term strategies. Short term strategy means appropriate management of the existing cases so that they recover fast and are onto their feet. Long term strategies include better maternal and child health care so as they are healthy enough not to get the episodes of diarrhea. Pre other preventive strategies for preventing episodes of diarrhea and preventing outbreaks of diarrhea that is identifying an increased number, an unusual number of cases immediately and trying to stop it there itself before it turns into an outbreak. Management of cases of diarrhea, the short term strategy. In management of a case of diarrhea, diarrhea is much more dangerous in under 5 children. Hence, the detailed management of diarrhea in under 5 children has been discussed in another lecture. Here, we will just enlist the principles and talk in two lines about each principle of management of a case of diarrhea. The principles of Management of a case of diarrhea include first and foremost the rehydration therapy, antibiotic only and only if indicated, mostly it is not indicated, zinc supplementation and continued feeding. There is a myth that during an episode of diarrhea the gut requires rest and there is people stop feeding during the duration of diarrhea which is very wrong. The first principle is rehydration. For that, we need to assess the status of hydration in the patient of diarrhea. So, we assess the dehydration, the level of dehydration as per the table which is given below. We have to assess the patient and classify him into having severe dehydration, some dehydration or no dehydration. That is diarrhea with no dehydration. And appropriately, we have to provide the rehydration therapy table says that classify as severe dehydration if two or more of the following signs are present. The signs which are listed in the column. If severe dehydration is present then IV rehydration that is intravenous replacement of fluids is advocated. Some dehydration if two or more signs are present which are listed in the second cell. For this we need to give Fluids which is mostly orally in the form of oral rehydration salt, continued feeding and after rehydration in front of our eyes, we advise the mother to maintain that hydration at home. And finally, if you assess there is no dehydration, then give fluids and ORS to prevent any dehydration in future and advise the mother to prevent how to prevent dehydration in the child and the danger signs if they appear then she should report immediately to the doctor and then follow up after five days if there is no improvement in diarrhea. If the assessment is that the patient has severe dehydration we need to give intravenous fluid the best recommended is regular lactate or diarrhea treatment solution. If none is available, then only then normal saline can be used for replacing the lost fluid. But dextrose solutions, whatever concentrations, should not be used. Intravenous therapy begins with rehydration dose. And once the hydration status is maintained, then maintenance therapy intravenously. The details are discussed in the another lecture I told before. If the patient has some dehydration, then we need to give the new reduced osmolarity oral dehydration salt. The details of this salt are again discussed in another lecture and the blog. If 
the patient has diarrhea with no dehydration we again need to give oral rehydration therapy for prevention of dehydration in the way of giving ors packets and if required home available fluids if chance would have it that a child with moderate dehydration is there but there is no ors packet available what can be done in emergency home available ingredients like salt and sugar can be used to prepare sugar sugar salt solution at home but only till the time when ors packets become available because if the method goes wrong it can do more harm to the child than good so how is it prepared clean water 1 liter 6 level teaspoons of sugar half level teaspoon of salt and stir the mixture till sugar dissolves now is this a level teaspoon no be very careful if you do not level the teaspoon it will lead to over too much of addition of the ingredient and is very harmful in that case this is a level teaspoon so a home made solution can be made with using appropriate amounts of sugar and salt but it is generally not recommended because the recipe is often forgotten adding too much of either sugar or salt can be counterproductive it can give osmotic load to the gut and cause even more dehydration so can be even dangerous or even fatal so we have to be very very careful as to not to add too much of any ingredient the ingredient may not be available or too little may be given because the mother is at home she may give one or two spoonfuls and may feel that she has done her work and now dehydration will not occur so it is recommended not generally recommended only in emergency situation when no other ors packet or no other home available fluids are there is chemotherapy indicated no antibiotics are generally not recommended because they may do more harm than good but they can be considered only if the following causative agents have been identified as the cause of diarrhea following medication should never be used in treatment of diarrhea neomycin purgatives obviously because they will worsen the diarrhea opium or atropine because they are dangerous for children and patients with dysentery because they can decrease the motility of the gut without cause without curing diarrhea and lead to dangerous paralytic ileus mexaform or loperamide cardiotonics for treating shock because shock shock means very low blood pressure may be even unrecordable so shock in case of diarrhea is because of hypovolemia because of water loss and should be corrected by intravenous fluids only and not by medicines steroids are not indicated at all and following drugs are of no value except oxygen if required in case of zinc supplementation because zinc has been shown to reduce the duration and severity of diarrhea the dose is less than 6 month of age 10 mg more than 6 months of age 20 mg should be given at least for 10 to 14 days continued feeding as we have discussed before needs to be continued because stopping the feeding will lead to malnutrition and will make the child more prone towards a second episode long term interventions for control of diarrhea will lead to a situation where the incidence itself of diarrhea will be reduced and the long term interventions include better maternal and child health care improving the prenatal nutrition of the mother will lead to lesser incidence of low birth weight child a low birth weight child is more prone to diarrhea then the breast milk produced by a well fed mother will have a better quality more nutritious improving the child nutrition by promotion of breastfeeding timely introduction of complementary feeding in adequate quantity vitamin a supplementation then immunization how does it prevent diarrhea we will discuss in another slide other preventive strategies include sanitation and health education sanitation adequate and safe water drinking drinking water 
habit of hand washing with soap before cooking before eating before feeding a child after defecation after cleaning a child and after disposing of a child's tools then private and sanitary latrine for each household if possible if not possible then at least 10 meters away from the drinking water source last and not the least is health education regarding breastfeeding complementary feeding clean drinking water because as you know knowledge is the best prevention and finally preventing outbreaks preventing outbreaks requires strengthening of epidemiological surveillance system which means keeping an eye on the incidence of diarrhea and recognizing early any unusual rise in the number of diarrheal cases and to act immediately so as to stop the outbreak from in the area itself and it does not become a larger outbreak one such epidemiological surveillance system in india is integrated disease surveillance program where the number of cases of diarrhea are reported to the controlling authority regularly vaccines for prevention of diarrhea one such vaccine which is directly against diarrhea is rotavirus vaccine oral cholera vaccine is cholera vaccine is another vaccine measles vaccines indirectly prevents measles why because measles is followed by a few frequently followed by diarrhea as a complication so preventing measles will prevent the frequent complication as well indicators of diarrhea control how will we know that whether we are uh, the strategy that we are adopting the measures that we are taking are adequate for controlling diarrhea in our country so these indicators can measure our progress these indicators measure three aspects indicators of diarrhea prevention indicators of diarrhea treatment and indicators of oral rehydration therapy use indicators of diarrhea prevention include the percentage of population which has access to improved drinking water sources there is a definition for improved drinking water if the drinking water source is according to that definition we say that the household has improved drinking water source so in percentage of population using improved drinking water sources in urban areas rural areas and overall in the country similarly improved sanitation facilities in urban areas rural areas and overall in the country percentage of one year olds who have been immunized against measles percentage of children in below 5 years of age who are underweight as per the definition of underweight children below 5 years of age who are stunted as per the definition of stunted children below 6 months of age who are exclusively breastfed as per the definition of exclusive breastfeeding children between 6 months to 9 months in which complementary feeding has been introduced in addition to breastfeeding and children between 1 to 2 years of age who are still breastfeeding then children below 5 years between 6 months to 5 years of age who have received an appropriate the appropriate amount of vitamin a supplements now indicators of diarrhea treatment percentage of under 5 children with diarrhea who have received oral rehydration therapy with continued feeding the percentage of under 5 children with diarrhea who have received ors packet percentage of under 5 children with diarrhea who have received recommended home made fluids percentage of under 5 children with diarrhea which were given increased amount of fluids and percentage of under 5 children who presented with diarrhea who were advised and given continued feeding during diarrhea indicators of oral rehydration therapy use it is defined as the percentage of children under 5 who presented with diarrhea and received oral rehydration therapy in form of ors packet or recommended home available fluids with continued feeding gender wise residence wise that is urban areas rural areas and wealth index quintile wise which means if you divide the entire population into four quintiles lower 25 percentile according to wealth 
second quintile middle that is the third quintile and the richest 25 percent the highest quintile control programs for diarrheal diseases that is national or state level programs for control or reducing the diarrheal cases the diarrheal disease control program was started in 1978 in india with the objectives of reducing the mortality and morbidity due to diarrheal diseases it got a fresh impetus fresh impetus by introduction of oral rehydration salt and national oral rehydration therapy program was introduced into it in 1992 the diarrheal disease control program was merged with csm program child survival and safe mother rule program then with reproductive and childhood program and finally presently it is a part of national health mission recently the integrated global action plan for prevention and control of pneumonia and diarrhea has been invoked it is a cohesive approach to end diarrhea and pneumonia with specific goals for 2025 the details have been discussed in another lecture the specific goals are as listed below